Uh, oh, okay. yeah. uh, very easily erased, so I do it usually to get started. And then I have graphite, which is essentially what you have in a pencil form or in a stick form, however you have it. Um, all right, so I'm going back to the eye that we worked on last time and we kind of didn't really finish it, the class that was ended. So I wanna just start with saying what I finished with, which was the shape of eyelash. And it's an important something, it's an important um, element to understand because you will utilize it for a lot of other things. When you draw hair and you try to show the, the, the texture of it and the, the feel of it, a correct way to show it is to show how it feathers, how it sort of disappears. Um, and it's something that you do, as you remember, by pressing and then releasing, press and release, press and release. And when you release, you end your stroke with the, the sh your stroke will taper at its end. So it's gonna end with nothing. And it's something that you could use. It's something about line quality that you can later use just to show you just a just a, a general feel like for example if i want to draw something um let's say i'm going to draw lips really quick i will i will press and i will uh let go a little bit i will press and let go a little bit loose loose and then press again i press and i let go what I'm doing here is I'm playing with the quality of the line. I'm making it thick at places where I want to show depth, and we'll get into it later, the shape of the mouth. And I'm pressing very lightly in other places where I want to show maybe lightness, where I want to show um, that it disappears into nothing, for example, as we have with eyelashes. So it's, it's a line quality thing that it's good for you to um, Kind of get in touch with your hands because it's sometimes we want to tell our hand to do something but the hand doesn't do it and it takes a little bit of practice to tell the hand to not be stiff and to really be be very light with the touch on the paper and control it so it's something that comes as you work you're going to notice that all right so eyelashes open up like a fan so if i have let's say this is a this is the top part of the top eyelid, the direction, not the shape, I did, but the direction, you know, I'm also going to do this shape, is this way, that way, that way, that way, like a fan. So it's not all going that way, it's not all going that way now, just going all to all outwards. The density of your eyelashes and every person looks different. And you know, if you look up, as I told you last time, the most important practice to do is to draw your own face. So if you look at your own, your own face in the mirror, you observe your, your eyelashes and you ask yourself, if I had to put little arrows, where would those arrows go? How would the fanning really look like? What would be the distribution? You're gonna notice that there is more, it's more dense toward the outside of the eye. So out here, I will add more, I will add more eyelashes. And then, oops, that's a little too long. And then here, it's usually much lighter, much thinner, very fine hairs. And it's the same thing on the bottom, on the bottom eyelashes. Again, as they are, as we did here, the eyelashes come from the very, very outside part of the coverage that we have on the eyes. So we don't want the eyelashes to come, we don't want the eyelashes to touch the, 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 the eyeball because the eyeball is very sensitive. So we're gonna place them a step away from it, which would be in the lower line that we have. We draw, we don't draw, let's say we know that there are two lines, right? We have the, the, the line that is right up against the eyeball. The, uh, the line that touches it. And then we have the outside line, the line that's closer to us. And that gives us a little step here. Now that step, we, we could either draw, it really is diff, it's, it depends on the style on how you're trying to show it. Um, in this particular case, I lightly, I sketched it lightly, but remember that there aren't actually lines here. We're trying to 
we're trying to show lines without being too linear. You could be very linear if this is your stylistic choice and you're doing, you know, comics or a certain style or, um, um, you know, coloring pages where every area needs to be, you know, uh, lined and, and limited and has barrier. But when you just do an art, then you want to look at your reference or whatever you're drawing and ask yourself, is there an actual line there or is there just a difference in values? And values, as you can remember, are a scale from one to 10 or from one to nine or from one to four, it's however you choose, in which you divide the tones of your artwork, you divide it into swatches that you can identify. Because if you can identify the swatch here, if you can look at this and be like, okay, I see here two, two grays, I see value three here, and then value uh, seven. And those numbers are, you know, you can do your own, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to give you two different numbers that you can differentiate. Then it's easy to go back to, to, to my artwork and get the same thing. For example, I'm seeing almost, there's almost a tri triangle here. I'm not gonna draw a triangle because there are no lines here, but I'm gonna think about it and it will help me to achieve that. Where's my, let me just find my eraser. Okay, so I have kneaded eraser and regular eraser. And with the kneaded eraser, I like to use it because it helps me remove, it helps me remove layers um, in a controlled way. I can control how much I remove. I mean, you could do the same thing with regular eraser, but it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit harsher, you know. This is, this, the uh, kneaded eraser has a very soft organic finish to it, uh, the way you shape it, of course. So I will reach that value that I want to achieve here by just dab, 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 just dabbing, 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 just the way you apply concealer for any of you. I stopped using concealer two years ago, so. But I remember when you learn to apply makeup, they teach you, you know, you dub, 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 you don't smear, you just dub, dub, dub. So I still use that in my art. Anyway, all right. So yeah, that was a little side note about values and how they help us in showing a certain thing. So for example, here, what the change of the values help me, what, this, what the change of the values does it shows that the eye is round, that it's not flat, that it goes inwards. And that would be the same thing, both sides of the eyeball, I would darken it a little bit. And even if my reference maybe not showed so much, I, you know, I don't care, I'll, I'll adjust it to my liking. So maybe I'll darken this here a little bit more, even more than the reference photo, if I feel that I wanna if I, if I want to accentuate the roundness. Now, I'm not sure if it's actually that needed, but it's something that you are, you're in control of adjusting if you feel like. Okay, so a uh, tool that I used today, maybe used it last time too, um, it's a paper blender. It's essentially a, a, a paper that's just rolled and its edges are, are shaped to be, to be pointy. Um, and you could, um, if you if you have one of those, and you have them in bunch of, they sell them in, in in very tiny. I think this is the largest. I don't remember seeing larger than that. You can actually clean it by using sandpaper. Uh, just you just uh, remove the remove the pigment, the charcoal graphite from the edge when you want to clean it. But I barely clean it. I kind of keep it dirty because it's uh, kind of like a soft brush. Anyone has a technical question so far? I know some of you may uh, uh, be, may have been the first time experimenting. So um, if you do have a question, just unmute yourself and, uh, and let me know. Um, all right, so what were you doing here? All right, so we worked on the eyelashes a little bit and then I have, okay, so I have that step here and then I have the eyelashes on the bottom that I wanted to show. 
and they're also fanning out the way the top is slightly different, I would say. And you know, I'm observing this eyes, the eyes right in front of me. And just based on what I'm seeing here, I can see that there is a lot of movement here. So notice I'm getting the, the, the eyelashes are coming out of the outer step, not the inner step. And I'm not, I'm not actually gonna draw a line here, but I'm gonna arrange the eyelashes in a way that they will visually connect this into a line. And by doing that, I make it more closer to reality. And I, and I uh, avoid doing a line that doesn't actually exist there, that I just, it just helps me see. When we do lines, it's because it just, it simplifies things. But you wanna know, you wanna be um, critical of when to use an actual line that you see. All right, so I didn't actually do a line. I just did some eyelashes. The eyelashes on the bottom are softer. They're finer. They're transparent. Some people barely have any, and they cross each other. There's some X's. Um, on the top here, I think there, there are probably some X's, but it's very, you can barely notice it. But on the bottom, you do notice the X's. You know, notice the overlapping. But usually, if you want to stay true to real to reality, I mean, when you look at me right now, even in this video, you don't see any eyelashes on the bottom. So sometimes we, you know, it's 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 a beautiful it's a beautiful feature of the eye, and we want to draw it. But you want to also ask yourself artistically. You look at your model, ask yourself, am I actually seeing eyelashes there that need to show in the hour, or I'm just putting it putting it there because I know they're there. So it's something that it's a decision for you to make artistically, whatever you're trying to show. Um, the eye, if you remember the way we're talking about it uh, last time, the eye comes out a little bit. It's not flat, it's, it's, it's rounded. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sphere that has the eyelashes closing on it, like, you know, like, like windows, like uh, Venetian folds, right? So, uh, uh, closes on the eye. So my point is that because it's not a flat, it's not a flat item, it's a rounded thing, you will show it also by the shadow that you'll see under the eye. And that's of course very different from person to person, but always ask yourself how, what kind of shadow, what kind of shadow, what shape of shadow am I getting under the eye? And usually there is something because it's not going to be flat. It's going to be, it's going to curve out a little bit. So I'm just going to go like this. I'm just going to so, just go with the shape of the eyelid and might as well, if I'm already shading around, let me do the top also. I'm going to shade, shade um, above the eyelid that I already sketched last week. And one thing that I, you know, I, I, I last time um, I mentioned, and I want to mention it again because as I was working in the past couple of weeks, I was, I noticed how it's, you know, sometimes I, 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 I teach something and then I realize how helpful it is if I actually put it to use in my own work. Like I listen to myself, and sometimes I don't listen to myself. I do shortcuts, and then I regret it. So don't do shortcuts. But like one thing, one rule that I try to obey by, and that I ask myself sometimes is every shape that I do, if it's a complex shape, I try to divide it by three. It just, it's so helpful when you take, take anything and just tell yourself, let's divide it by three and work third, third, third. It just, it makes it more approachable and you can be more accurate to do that. So I think you remember last time we talked about the eyelid, I broke it one, two, three, one, two, three. And when you, you break it up, it just forces you to pay more attention to whatever shape, whatever curve, whatever line you're looking at to, to stay true to it and to convey what it conveys. Excuse me? Uh, yes. Uh, when you're doing the shading, what is it that you're using under the eye and over the eye in terms of like, your, are you using a charcoal? Are you using graphite? Are you using something very soft? Um, what, I'm using, what I'm using right now is 6B graphite. So it's a soft graphite. And okay. it's, a stick. it's a stick, so it allows me to do, to do uh, large sections. 
I'm doing a demo, so I'm doing it very large. You're yeah. probably not doing a large artwork, you're doing a small. So most likely your pencil, if you have a 6B pencil, that's all you need. You, you'll be okay with that. So what you want, what you could do is you sharpen it and you use it. Um, let me just grab one here. One of my uh, graphite pencils. You kind of sit outside a little bit. I'm sorry. Do you kind of use it on the side a little bit? Ex exactly, exactly. Okay. You sharpen it. This is not a perfect example, but you sharpen it uh -huh. um, um, the, the correct way, really. And I don't have examples of that here, but <laughs> I use exacto knife to sharpen it. I'm sorry, are you showing me something? Yeah, you kind of just do it like on the, sorry, like on the side like that. It's Exactly, exactly. Okay. And if you use exacto knife to sharpen it, then you're able to achieve more of um, from the lead showing. So you okay. have more surface to work with. And then you put one finger on it and you just go like this. Okay, great. And that allows you to just do a, a coverage. But then what I do, and that's, a, that's an artistic choice of you to decide how to leave this shaded area. I could okay. use, I have my suede and I also experimented this week. I cut a piece of t-shirt and I'm using t-shirt. I, I just wanted to see what t-shirt does. Um, and it was great, you know, every, every paper that you, every paper that you use will have different tooth, will have different texture. It will feel different. Some of them are more, um, what's the word? Like rough or like, rough yeah rough more like like a road like a yeah they're heavily textured and some are very smooth right. so and, and 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 you'll see how those different textures accept charcoal and graphite differently the graphite looks different on it it looks you know thicker thinner uh smoother um less smooth so with a t-shirt i'm just gonna just experiment with it a little bit and i love using fabrics you know to to blend because it just gives it more painterly feel. It just feels more like a painting rather than a drawing. And it also gives it softness. Um, many art, many art, many drawings that I, you know, I like to go to the Metropolitan Museum website. They have, um, I think they have their whole catalog available as images. So I would just go and I would just download a bunch of drawings and just open them and just, you know, try to study them and copy them just to, to learn. And, and it's inter interesting to see how the masters approach shadows. How did they, how did they achieve coverage? I don't see that many, I can't say that the, the blending with fabric is something that I see a lot of. I usually, when I look at let's say classical artwork from, you know, uh 1900 or so what i usually see is 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 this so let me so now we're moving into the shaded how to shade part of our lecture but abby i answered your question did you have any other question um the only other question i have which is kind of a little bit different is when i was practicing and i know how you kind of gave as a reference the one third one third one third and one half for the eye. i found that sometimes when I divided it and I put the hairline on and I did the one third and one third and one third, my one third like was meeting up with my one half. So I had like the eyebrows and the eyes kind of like on the same spot. And then I would just kind of like tweak it. But is there any any guidance you have for that or no? Um, let me do a very quick uh, little uh, chart here. So okay. we have two eggs, one egg, two, two faces, um, one we divide by two, and that's where the eyes are sitting. And then we drop a hairline. We decide yeah. where it is. That's the part that probably, you know, was a bit confusing because this is something sort of up to you. There are methods in which they give you an exact measurement and I forget the exact measurement. I kind of do it by eye. By eye, I would do something like that. So that would be maybe a, a, a third of this half. Okay. Not third. Maybe a quarter, somewhere between a quarter and a third of this part, right? So yeah. that, would be, that would indicate my face from here to here. So if this is my face now, I would divide this to three, which would okay. be one, 
two and three, one, two, three. And then you can see that the, this is the this is the eyebrow line and this is the eye line. Okay. So that should work. If you put your hairline too high up, then or maybe too low down, then this the third line here and the half line here would meet. And you don't want that. You don't want them to meet. You want some space. Okay, great. Thank you. So so yeah, it, it's a lot about. It's a lot about adjusting it as as you see, but it takes you know sometimes you, you you have to draw a couple of faces that are just off in order to understand, you know what is yeah. you know what makes more sense and what to adjust. Thank you. All right. So um, moving on to some shading shading techniques. So one shading techniques that we talked about and that I showed you is the fabric which I, I, I use a lot, I love and I enjoy. Um, another method, which I'm not gonna do right now is sanding with a piece of uh, sanding paper. Um, that is recommended with uh, a certain type of paper, preferably a very thick paper, not very, a thick paper, a, a watercolor paper um, that allows you to actually remove a layer from it. So, and that gives you very beautiful soft edges, incredibly beautiful. Um, I, I would suggest working with a mask because, um, you know, when you send, you know, a lot of particles come down. Um, so that's one more method. Um, um, a, a very a kind of classical approach is um, to just use lines. And uh, let me use and change material what should i use i'll use this okay so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do a little swatch here just to give you ideas um so shading we use shading because we want to we want to show shape and we want to show light and we want to show texture shading help us in in achieving many uh, many many ways of, of, of showing what we want to show in a more realistic way. You can do line artwork without shading and any without any shading at all, or you could do line artwork with a little bit of shading, or you could do everything shaded. Um, um, shading really what, what I mean is is bringing your surface to a slightly higher value. Where's my app here? Um, bringing my surface to a slightly higher value. So when I shade, I ask myself, what am I going from what from what? So this case, let's say it's, 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 my, it's my brightest, it's value 10 here. So I wanna darken it. So let's, let's do a couple of things. One way of darkening it is just doing lines. Parallel lines. I'm looking at this and I'm looking at this and I can tell and I squint when I do it because when you squint, you're able to, you're simplifying what you see and you're getting rid of all the details. You only, you're seeing more tones and less colors. So I would squint and I'll be like, okay, you know what? That feels like this value to me. Okay, now how about I wanna take this, I'm gonna just draw the same thing more or less. It gives me a general darkness, but I want to make it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to walk, I'm just going to go back in and just do one more of the same thing. And that, it makes the lines more denser and that would naturally darken the area. Visually, this area is now darker than this. If it's not dark enough, if the difference is not clear enough, I'm going to do one more. One more time, go over it. Take a step back and ask myself, hmm, does that give me two different values? Yes, it does. So imagine if you take this visual element of stripes and you use that in your artwork. For example, down here or up here, you just go like this, just with your pencil, just lines, and you, before you start doing your lines, you're gonna decide what shape of shade you're working on. You're not gonna just randomly start doing lines. You're going to decide this area should be shaded 
I'm gonna cover this area with lines like that. So we have this, we have cross hatching, which we could go the same thing, but we could just go the other way also. Now, when I do, I, I'm gonna, it's not true to say when I do that, I barely use this method, but here and there when I, you know, look at, at work, look at, you know, look at, um, uh, just do research of drawings, historical drawings, just to learn. I, I noticed that this cross hatching could be utilized in a very clever way. For example, let's say I have a sphere. You could take this idea of line and crossing each other to not only show darker value, but also to show shape. So if I want this to feel that it's, you know, that it's a sphere, that it's rounded, then I'm gonna have the lines going in around, 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 and around, and around, kind of doing them very, the lines are very, uh, as much as I can, uh, unified in their direction. So here's one side, and then I'm gonna just go to the other side, and I know it's kind of light, so it's not easy for you to see. But what I'm doing right now is just I'm, I'm giving the idea of the roundness of the shape that I'm showing. So here I use my, 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 my cross hatch idea to emphasize the shape. And I can even go to this, go to this uh, uh, darker area, or I'm sorry, go to this sphere and I use my eraser to highlight areas, for example, here. And then I could maybe darken some of the lines down here or go over them one more time to be more precise to show that idea of a sphere dark here, light there. So this is another way. Another way, so, and, and, and really there's no, it's, 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 it's you and your creativity and your pencil. So be innovative. I'm showing you just different things, but you should, you know, I, I would try this and I would try other things and I will try to come with other things. You could do points, just a lot of tiny points. And this is gonna be one volume. And then you're gonna go over it and you're gonna do another tiny little strokes all going in one direction. And that would be another volume. And that would give your work a um, unique look and something very individual and, 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 and interesting with texture that is unique to you, how you perceive it. Um, okay, so now let's see what time it is right now. Who has a question? I'm sure someone has a question, technical or artistic question about what we just did. No? Okay. Um, remember the idea of subtracting, adding, adding and removing? That's my, I think that's my favorite. Maybe recently it's my favorite. So if I would shade an area, I could take my kneaded eraser and instead of drawing the little dots, I would just reveal little dots. Oh, you know what? I'm going to see it first. When I use suede, it actually removes a layer of the graphite. So it's something to consider because it actually brings it down, like from value two, brought it down to value three, for example. Um, but I would take my eraser and I would create texture a unique texture within that area. And that would just give me another, it's just another way of, of working with your graphite, like it's paint, you know? And then you could add to it, like from that I would go and I would serve, you know, outline it. really create something that has uh, thickness to it. Okay, now let's start talking about lips. 
Um, I'm wondering if any of you have uh, did eye drawing and if they want to perhaps show it. I don't know if uh, any if you have your Alice. Wow, bring it a little bit closer. Nice, very 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 nice, very cool, amazing. Kelly, nice. Wow, very cool. I like the, you, you kept that, the, the thickness of the, the outline there. I like that. Uh, Brooklyn and Python, nice, nice, nice. It feels, it looks good. It looks very good. It looks really, it looks shiny. It feels good. I would just add, okay. add, I would just add some darkness under here. There's darkness there that is good to, um, to remember that you have just to soften that. Um, anyone else want to show me? Uh, Cassie, um, Cassie, the, I like the, 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 the eye, the, the eyeball looks fantastic. My only thought would be perhaps just to add the tear duct, just add more definition to this triangle here. So, so it, it's clear that it's that the eye that there's a tear duct here. That's the only thing that's missing, but it looks fantastic. All right. Uh, oh, more more going eighty as well, I think. The more uh, I'm sorry, what, Philip? What? There's Margot, Katie, and Susan. I think are also got theirs up. All right, um, Margot. Um, I, I, you know, I like, I like what you did. I like the softening that you did between the top eyelid to the eyeball. I think you did a great job on that. I would also soften the, the inner part of the eye, the, the iris. I would, um, have less of a shine. I guess I left a lot of white here and it's a little too much white. So I would, um, I would close this in a little bit. Your shape here, Margot is a yes. little and i could see why you made that you know based on my work it's not very accurate my work so i would just make it a bit smaller because with highlights the smaller the better when you have a lot of highlights it loses its strength uh okay. katie uh let's let uh katie um um, 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 I like, I like, I like the accuracy of your values. I think you, you were very careful with your values. Um, what would I suggest? I guess, um, oh, I know what. Notice the outline of your eyeball, just the outline of your iris, just thicken it a little bit. Oh, maybe not. You know what, just add some more Add some more values down here. Yeah, the value of the eye is a little too solid for me on the bottom part. It's a little too unified. Make it a little bit more interesting with the uh, texture. With uh, Remember we talked about the, the real texture, like the sun, the rays of sun. Do a little bit more of that. Um, Caroline, uh, bring it a bit closer to me. Um, my comment would be to erase the very bottom part of the iris because right now it kind of it looks like it's coming out of the eye a little bit and i wanted to show that it's well this one doesn't really hide there but uh just there's just one line that i would just delete from the very bottom so it feels more true more correct um susan uh, raise it a little bit higher Wow, fantastic, fantastic. But my only comment, Susan, the shading is beautiful. And then you've been, I know you've been doing a lot of work recently. The shading is fantastic. Uh, just notice that your uh, pupil is not very centered. And that has to be centered. So just this, this black ball needs to be right in the center. That's the only comment. Okay, thank you. I don't know how to get my picture on, on the screen. Um, I think your video is off. Um, Otavia, fantastic job. Fantastic. Fantastic. Ooh, Gail, ooh. if you if you are able to um, uh, start your video, I would I, be able to see it. Who, who, who is trying to do that? I'm sorry. Gail. Gail, Gail has Gail? Gail. Okay, let me try to see if I can ask to. I'm going to do an ask to start video. Okay. Okay, here we go. 
Okay. Uh, Gail, then just let's point the see. eye to the screen. Okay. The to the uh, there you go. Beautiful. Uh, very beautiful. Um, I would soften the sh the shading that you have under the eye. I would soften it a little bit. I think maybe I myself went a little bit heavy. Um, when I say soften, I mean um, it's very thin right now. It's thin and dark, right? You have a thin, dark line here. So make it a little bit maybe thicker and a little bit softer in volume. Okay. Just, just, the, the, just something that I would, uh, just to make it more um, a, a softer contrast because okay. a harsh contrast uh, is a little much because the eye is fantastic. Thank you. All right, we're going to continue. Oh, one second. I have Marilyn. Uh, Marilyn, wow, Marilyn, beautiful. The the contrast. Look at the values of Marilyn's work. She used a lot. She used a lot of the darker values, and that really makes uh, makes it pop. Beautiful, fantastic job. Amazing. All right, so we're gonna move on to lips right now. So all of you, or any of you that can, have a fresh piece of paper in front of you. And it's, we're studying today. So don't worry about it being a beautiful, fantastic artwork. It's really, it's a study. You're doing a study today. And if you have, a, and if you have that uh, state of mind that we're doing a study, it makes it less stressful. You know, I, I, start, I start almost every day with a sketching session. Like I just sit and sketch and I work with very inexpensive paper. I work with newsprint, which is, you know, the, paper that's not meant for our work, you know, it's not meant for to last, but I use it because that makes me feel just more, you're more, you're less stressed when you're, when you don't think that you're doing uh, the artwork of your life, you know, that you're just doing something just to learn. So have, have that, have something to draw on and have your pencil. Um, and we will be doing, I'm gonna do just large leaps here. Let me drink a little bit of water. Maybe we'll take a two minute break. One second, what time is it? Uh, 3.42, um, we'll, do a, uh, we'll do a two minute break, okay? At 3.45, we'll continue, okay? I'm gonna just go drink some water and you have whatever you need, pencil, paper, have that in front of you, all right? I'll give everybody a little chingling when we get back. So if you need to run to the restroom or get another cup of coffee or whatever you need. You're doing a great job, by the way. Me? She, she, she. <laughs> Thank you, too. I'm, I'm teasing. <laughs> I know, I know, he, so am I. He's amazing. We're, I'm thrilled that we to, to are doing this with her. She's great. So I'm glad you're all enjoying it. Are you going to continue doing this with her? We have a three, this is a three-parter with her and then we'll probably do more in the future. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. She is absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Good, I'm yes. glad to hear it. Very good. Are we gonna be hanging anything at the library? If we do something good? Uh, you'd have, we have, we we would have I haven't thought that far ahead no so if you want to email me about that um, we can uh, we can talk about that sure I think it would be neat to to market her to show you know what we've done as a beginner's class yep sure we can. As long as they're good. Can I ask you if this is okay? Hi, yes. 
Who is asking? Uh, it's Abby, but it's Tara, but my, it says Abby on my thing. Are you holding it uh, upside down? Uh, no, hold on. Uh, there we go. Um, mm, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I feel that it would look better. Usually when someone looks at you, you don't see the top of the iris. The iris disappears. When they look down, then okay. you see the top of the iris. So for your drawing, it would look more uh, convincing if it was flipped, if the if your iris was was higher up and not lower. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right, we're going to uh, do lips now. Quick question. Yeah. Yes, Belinda. Did I add um, the right amount of? Um, you told me to add some darkness at the top. Did I do it right? Or does That's it great. still need more? Yes, yes, you did okay. fantastic. And notice how the, the slight darkness that you added there just yep. makes it more convincing. It makes it look more like a rounded surface, which is mm -hmm. what it is. Okay. So fantastic, amazing. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay, so when, when, when we draw lips, and if you, um, and if you, and if you remember my, my, my advice is to look at your own lips, but let's say, you know, may, may, may be easier for you to just Google lips and just practice a couple of shapes, but look at your own lips when you can and ask yourself, if you took a ruler and I'm going to take one right now and you just put it straight on your lips from one corner to the other, would it be, would the line, how straight would the line be? Up, down, what's the shape? Essentially, if we're taking the line that separates top and bottom lip, what kind of line would it be in comparison to a straight line? So this is what happens in my brain when I try to do, to draw lips with, let me draw the lips here, someone's stitch here. So, so the way I look at lips is first, I find a separation. So I will draw, a little line here. And then I will, I will place upper lip and I will place lower lip. But this would be my starting point. Okay, I'm not gonna start from the top. I'm not gonna start from that. I'm gonna st start with the division here in the center. Um, I'm gonna look at an image here as a, as a reference for lips. You could just work with me and, and later you will, you will do more leaps. You will draw. You will look at leaps. You look at yours, and you will try to be more accurate with your shape. But right now, we're just going to take a, some some generic image that I found. So upper leap, and and remember my third rules. I will divide it to three because it will help me be accurate with my shape. I divide it by three, just the little marks, and then oh, I'm sorry. And not only by three, I will divide it by two. This is my diagram for lips. It's not, I, I don't do this X every time I draw it, but this is not for us to learn it. Um, when you do, when you divide it by two, it just helps you mirror the image from here to here in a more accurate way. Because as you remember, we are symmet we are somehow symmetrical. We're not perfectly symmetrical. If we put a mirror here, it's not gonna be perfect and it shouldn't be because it looks weird, but um, it's pretty symmetrical. It looks pretty symmetrical. So whatever I'll do on that side, it will be easy for me to just transfer to the other side. So that's what I do. I do, I like to have um, a, a Cupid's bow here, right? So I like to have a little V, just a V. And then the top of the V would connect to the side of the mouth. So for now, you know, let's make it more simple. Let's just do this. I'm just gonna do these straight lines. I'm not thinking curvature. I'm just thinking straight lines. This is my general look of the lips, okay? This, this shape is a very simple, if I worked with only a ruler to show the shape. Now, we know that it's our body and our body is round and curved and organic like water like spears, like eggs. There's no sharp corners there. There's no straight lines. So how do we find the organic shapes within this perimeter of the, of the lip area? 
So here, I'm gonna just do it one more time here. So I like to think of it, so if, I like to divide it by three. So I have, I have uh, 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 this, a triangle here and a triangle here. This is something that I just want you to think of. You don't need to draw it. I just want you to think about it because once you think about it, it just makes it easy for you to then draw it. So let's say I have these two triangles here and then I have the center of the upper leaf, which is like a pillow. I essentially have pillow here, pillow here, pillow here, and another two big pillows here. This is how I divide my leaves. You can do it anywhere you want. You can look at leaves and find the different types of, of, of the division. But if I, have, if I have this shape and inside that shape, there's pillows that are arranged like that, then the shape that comes over it will adhere to that shape that I get by having those, those pillows. Um, so you're just to show you what I mean, how this changes. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bring down the Cupid's bow on the top. I'm gonna cut into that middle pillow. And then the direction of the leaves goes with that pillow effect. Because leaves are not flat, they're like tubes, they're like two. They're like two hot dogs that are shaped. So they have like, if you look at leaves from the side, they have this, they have this curvature. The bottom lip, the bottom lip is slightly different in, in, in curvature, but it's essentially like a butterfly, like two, two things, two, two soft pillows when you look at it from the side. So when you draw it from the front, you want to also have that sense, that feel of, of curvature, okay? So these are the pillows that we don't see. Now I'm going to draw the leaves large, and I'm going to pay attention or, or work with all these ideas that I had here of division and, and, and shaping the leaves. Because when we shape the leaves, we, we're not only thinking about showing showing their shape, but we're also thinking about the fact that they are placed over a barrel. Leaves are placed over, and let me show you something here, a little prop. Um, leaves are, are, are covering, are covering the, 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 the mouth area, which, which has, you know, it has teeth and it has a bone that comes out. See that? And you can, and when mm -hmm. you press against your teeth and your face, you can feel that shape. Um, and the lips cover, not only they cover, they also add some cushioning. So they come out of the, of the, come out of the profile, you know, when it's not a bone, when it's actually skin and membrane. Um, so we're showing curvature that, that way. We're showing curvature this way, up and down. Um, we're showing, there's a slightly, there's roundness to it. It's not, it's not straight, it's slightly curvy, up and down, up and down, like water. Um, okay, so I wanna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start my real artwork now, okay? So I'm gonna decide the size of it, decide the, the, the size of the leaves, which kind of random, I just want it to be large enough for you to see, but I'm gonna mark two, two marks here. So this is the beginning and the, and the end of my mouth. Um, um, and then I'm gonna do this. So I don't like to, the straight line that I do is really kind of a guideline. So I would do this, up and down and up and down, like two little mountains. And those two mountains will be then divided These two mountains divide my upper lip to three. And so it kind of helps me in kind of shaping it and giving it more personality. So because I remember that I have two small pillows here, then my line, my curve is gonna adhere to that idea. 
it's going to be curved as if there's something that pushes it towards us in a curved manner. Let me step uh, back to see. I think I would make the cupid's bow a little smaller. When you draw large, sometimes your proportions are, uh, it's easy to distort your proportion, which is why we step back and we look at it from far. All right, so this is the, this is the, the, the part, the center upper lip. You can divide it by two and have one side shaded and the other one have it slightly lighter. Many times you see, not many times, but, but you see some people have the cupids bow. They, they, there's a little, a little bit of a, of a V here that also affects this whole area here. So just look at whatever lips that you do. If you, if you work with mine, just copy what I do. I'm taking the side of, oh, I, I've been working with charcoal, but that, it's fine. I'm using the side of it and I'm darkening. I'm darkening my two outer triangles, my two outer pillows. I'm darkening them and I'm especially gonna darken them when they come down to the meeting point of the lower lip. And the reason I'm gonna darken them is because if I have a ball, if I have a spear and I have a light coming from here, this will be very light, but this would be the darkest, right? It's the same idea with lips. It's kind of rounded like a sphere and it's being lit most likely from the top because this is the most natural lighting condition from the top, unless you, you, know, you wanna make, you want a different look and then it's a different thing. But the bottom line is that on the bottom here, this would be dark. The light doesn't succeed in getting here all that much. So it's darker here. I'm gonna start doing the lower lip. Now, what I like to do, and I use very faint lines to show the outline of the top lip, but the bottom lip, I'm not gonna even do that. I'm just gonna show a shading that's under the lip. And the shape of it is kind of like that. And I have, and you can divide it, you can imagine that you have two big pillows here, and then the center of them is a little darker. Or you can imagine it as three pillows with one kind of squarish one in the center. The point is that whenever you shade it, you want to imagine that there's something curved behind it, that you're, that you're shading a pillow or you're shading a hot dog. Because if you don't, then your lines will be straight down instead of curved. And the curvature, and I'm going to show some quick clips here, The curvature would be if we had to just draw lines, it would be something like that. Right? This is this is what I'm trying to show here. I'm trying to show that there is curve up and down. And curve would, would mean that there was there, it's darker on the bottom, it's lighter on the top. Now the bottom leaf. Usually the bottom lip faces, uh, faces up. So there is, there is a, a, a place where light hits the bottom lip. Every lip is different, you know, color, shape, everything. So it's gonna look different from person to person. But in, in the case, in the lips that I'm doing right now, I'm gonna have high, highlight at around the third top of the lips. So the highlight, and I'm only marking it, mark it, I'm marking it so you see, not because a mark should be there, but let's say, you know what, I'm gonna do something else one second. I'm gonna actually take piece of, I'm gonna take my piece of t-shirt and I'm gonna, let me, I'm gonna remove the mark that I did. I'm gonna do it properly. Um, let me slightly darken the whole thing. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the, the idea of removing. So I'm gonna darken the whole area and I'm gonna just smooth it so it's kind of one solid. And then it would help me in 
first of all, darkening more because my base is already dark. My base is already not white. So I'm going to darken and I'm remembering my curvature idea. So I'm using the side of my charcoal to just go with that direction. And then I could reveal some highlights, which would sit around here, which is at about the third of the lip. And I can add some lines, faint lines, not a lot, but few lines that show that, that have that. Because when you look at your lips, many times you see, especially in the bottom lip, you see that there is that the skin. Um, um, the skin sits in a certain way that creates just lines, you know, especially if the lips are a little dry and you see more. But you have that element of, uh, 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 of lines that you see some, you see some lines. Let me look at it from far. And so now I have pretty, you know, a, a general feel of leaves and I can, I can darken what needs to be dark. So I have the two corners of the mouth and notice that, that sometimes the, the upper leaf would start, let's say from here, but then the lower leaf would really be a little bit inwards. Or sometimes it would be the opposite. The lower leaf would be even wider than the upper leaf. So it's, 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 it's something to look at and pay attention to. The, 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 the corners of the mouth, and I'm gonna darken it now to show it better. So here's the line, the line that divides the top and bottom. And this is a good place for you to practice line quality. So for example, I will, right now the line is pretty uh, unified in its thickness. And so I can play with it to make it more, to make it that it gives more information, that it's more interesting line and not a boring line. How can I make this line work for me? How can I make this line show lips? So I would, um, let's say I'll, the corner of the lips, I'll make a little circle here. And then, and then maybe I will, I will make that uh, 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 the, the part that goes up, I would maybe smooth out a little bit or erase with my needed eraser. And I would make it very thin. You know, this is a little too dramatic here. So I would. So now the line that separates top and bottom is no longer uh, uh, unified and it has more personality and it has more details in it. And I will step back from my work and if it's small, it's easy. If it's big, you step far, you stand feet away and you look at it from far and ask myself what's, what works and what doesn't work. So I like the overall shape. I feel like the top here, I don't like what's going on up here. So I'm gonna maybe, let me darken this whole area and the side of the leaf here there's a little bit triangle here um and i'm gonna just make sure that i have the same sort of curve that i have here i have it on the other side right now i don't i'm gonna take my needed eraser remove what's unnecessary and notice how i try i always try to achieve to achieve shape by not by outlining it, by rather, but instead of out, outlining it, I would try to work on be, being accurate with its shape, its shading, the overall shape of it. I darken the two side triangles a little bit. And then this area naturally becomes a little bit lighter. Um, darken this a little bit more, step back. I don't like that separation of the values here is not correct. So maybe I'll drag it up. 
And if I want an area, if I want something to be a little bit lighter, I could take my, uh, uh, my immunity eraser and I could just go like this. And this really comes from um, looking, looking at a reference. Right now, um, I'm kind of looking at reference, but not really. I'm kind of using my head, uh, so I'm not even giving you a reference. Because, because the more you look at reference, the more you store in your brain information about how skin behaves, how values behave. Um, OK, so the top lip looks OK. The bottom lip, the, the, the part that's the closest to the opening would be the darkest because the, the leaf from the top blocks the light to, to get to right here. So I'm gonna darken the inside of the lower leaf. I'm gonna darken it and I'm gonna, and, and, and I'm gonna remember that this darkness meets with the corners here. because I want my highlight to be, my highlight will look better if, if the whole, if you, if the surface is darker. If your surface is, if, you, if your surface is light, it would be harder to show highlight. Not harder, but it would be more, uh, it would be less obvious. If you want the highlights, if you're drawing just beautiful lips, and you want to, and, and let's say female lips with lipstick or something, and you want to show the shininess to them, then darken your whole air, darken the whole area, and then just find, remove some, remove uh, some graphite or charcoal here and there to reveal the highlights instead of, you know, drawing around it. But darken and then remove. Um, so lower lip, let's see, the lower lip will make it a bit wider. So I'll bring it all the way to the corners. And there's, there's also a triangle here. Um, it's kind of, the triangle on the, on the bottom to me seems that like it's a bit straighter. Uh, you know, it's the reference that I'm working on, Never mind. You'll, you'll look at your own lips and you'll decide. And you'll decide for yourself what kind of angle or what kind of uh, curvature you have on the bottom, on the lower lip. Um, many times you see some sort of, <coughs> excuse me, some sort of uh, straightness happening down here. Just the, 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 the major part, not just the center third, but let's say the whole half is more, is, feels a bit straighter in comparison to other curvature of the lips. And I'm looking, I'm walking far and looking at it from far. And when I look at it from far, I see that there is some highlights in places that maybe not necessary. For example, I usually will not have highlights here and here because these two triangles, these two side pillows here are, um, are, are going more inwards, you know? The center part of the lips, the major third part that I, you know, suggest to have more highlights is the part that protrudes out the most, which is why it accepts the most light. And I will. And notice I don't go like this, even though maybe I did before at the beginning stage. When I get to the stage that it's going to be kind of final, I'm not going to just go with the direction. I'm going to go with the texture of the lips. And if you look at your own lips and you know that you have those lines, like, you know, the hot dog stripes, striped hot dog type, and those lines create breakage. They break up the highlights. So you have a bunch of highlights that go with how the lips are kind of divided with this skin, you know, uh, stripes type of uh, texture. I don't know how to describe it. All right. Um, and those highlights are sitting in a, in a form that looks kind of like that.
Does anyone have any thought or question about what we did so far? As I mentioned to you, we don't have any sharp, I'm sorry, someone want to say something? Um, I was just a little, con um, I just had a little trouble doing the, um, where you did the highlights on the bottom lip, the lines that you were saying you did around them, at first you made them darker and I wasn't quite sure where or how you like knew, figured where to put the lines around the highlights. Um, okay, so let me, let me do a little, uh, a, uh, maybe I'll do it here. Are you seeing? I'll do. I'll use this. Okay. Okay. So, so because this is kind of the frame that I'm working on, yeah. I darken. Let's say I'm gonna darken everything. Okay. So now everything okay. is dark. Okay. And now I'm gonna look at those lines that I did, the the curved lines as the lines that show the skin folds in the bottom okay. lip, which are very, very few and, and, they, and, uh, and they, don't, they, they don't show up top to bottom the way I have here, but just the general direction of them. Yeah. Then put the highlights, I think about it. So I don't put the highlight, I wouldn't put the highlight on a line. Why? Because that line means that the skin goes inside. So there's going to be no highlight here. The highlight is going to be in between those lines. Okay. Um, but this is really, it's something very, it's something very uh, particular and detailed. And it's not that, like if you draw, if you do a highlight, I, I basically put the, I put the highlights in between the lines that you have here. That's okay. where I put them. Because when you have a line, the highlight cannot sit there. That's the general idea of the placement of the highlights. And I place them on the upper third part of that lower lip. Okay. Uh, basically closer to the opening rather than not centered. That's the point, not centered. Because if you center it, your lip is gonna look in a certain way that's not necessarily correct. The okay. lip has a certain, the lip has a certain curvature. It's not perfectly half a circle. It has a certain curvature. And many times you see the highlights really are on the upper part of it. And those highlights are seated between the wrinkles of the skin. Okay. So you can do first the highlights and then do the lines, or you could do first the lines and then the highlights, or you could not do the lines and just do highlights, or you could not even do highlights, whatever. Whatever looks okay. good in your artwork. Good to experiment different things, especially because it pushes you to see things that you may have not noticed and okay. observe things that you may have not noticed before. But all these things are just details that aren't crucial. I don't think they're crucial. Um, so as I started saying, because our, our, our body is organic and soft and curvy, then I, I make sure that that idea of no sharp corners stays true with my eyes and with my lips. Okay. Um, so for example, with the eyes, even when I have a place that feels kind of sharp, it's always, if you zoom in, it's always rounded. It's always a little bit rounded. Even this corner of the eye here, it's okay. very important that it's slightly rounded, that it's not sharp, sharp, sharp. Have a bit of roundness to it. It's just gonna look, it's gonna feel better. Same okay. thing with my, the corner of the, the lips also, I, I, I show a little bit of darkness here and then I round, it's round around it. It's soft and not pointy and not sharp. Gotcha. Um, at this stage, I don't know if that works this. Um, I step, you know, I step a little bit far and I see that there is a bit of a separation between the body. Um, I don't know, it doesn't bother me, it's kind of nice, but. But yeah, because you're thinking symmetrical, then I always have a, a, a imaginary line going in the center. And then I flip my eyes from here to here, from here to here to see that it's actually symmetrical. 
and it isn't it isn't all that symmetrical you could see the the shading isn't very uh identical on both sides and it doesn't really it doesn't necessarily need to be because the lighting conditions could be different but it's something to just look at and pay attention to and decide if it works for you or not does anyone have um does anyone want to show the lips what they did and maybe we'll do some comments on that um so, okay well um, maybe we'll start with people that didn't show before, um, unless there's mm, Carla. Carla wants to show. Okay, bring it closer. Wow, look at those lips. Beautiful. Carla, you did beautiful. Two comments. Um, two comments. Um, notice that your highlights are a little bit too close to this. It, they're too close to the opening. And the opening of the mouth, remember that this area is curved. So the very top part of that bottom lip is, is away from the light. So there's no highlight there. So I want you to just darken just the, the meeting point of the uh, uh, up and, and bottom lips, and it's gonna look even more realistic. All right. Um, who else that did not show before wanna show next? um helga um helga and then we'll look at madeline um helga your highlights um and it could be from me notice that your the center of your leaf and the two corners the value difference is a little bit much so i feel that you should darken the bottom of your leaf which would then bring this whole section closer to the two side triangles so the values aren't so different to kind of soften out the, the differences in values to make it more natural and organic. Um, Madeline, uh, beautiful shape of lips, really beautiful. Um, I would darken a little bit more the bottom lip, the bottom lip on its bottom part, I would darken it um what else would i do and i would even be a little bit more brave with your shading because i feel like you're nervous to go too dark but think take your dark your very dark uh outline that you have in the center and play with it a little bit darken the corners a little bit more uh darken this area a little bit more have some more experiment with slightly darker shading just to see what it does. You may look at it and be like, you know what? I like this better because this is beautiful. But it's just something to think about. Thank you. No problem. Who else wants to show? Um, uh, I'm not seeing uh, um, um, Otavia, beautiful, beautiful highlight, beautiful highlight. Um, the corner of your lips, make sure that there's, it's slightly darker around them so it doesn't end like that. So it's not like a, just a cut in the face, you know, cause that becomes like the Joker. You don't want that. You want to just <laughs> soften, but beautiful. Um, who else wanted to show, even if you showed before? Um, you can unmute yourself if I'm not seeing you. There's just a lot of faces I may be seeing. Okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, Alice. We're gonna look at Alice, Marilyn, and Kelly. Okay, Alice, bring it closer a little bit. Um, I love, I love the shaded look. Of the top lip is just beautiful. Um, one thing to notice is notice the symmetry between between the two sides isn't perfect. Like I have a feeling one side is a little bit off, but it still looks beautiful. Um, um, you can be a little bit more brave with the highlights. If you darken the bottom lip the way, the way you did the top lip and then just take an eraser. And if you don't have an eraser, it doesn't matter. Take regular eraser and just do a few dots on the, on the, on, on the, in the third, on the top part of the lower lip to just see okay. what it does. Because right now uh -huh. your highlights are very careful and I want you to do a little <laughs> bit more, go a little bit, uh, you know, go wild. Thank you. No problem. All right, we'll look at Marilyn's now. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lips. Very kissable. <laughs> uh, Kelly, yours, yours too. 
yours too. Uh, Kelly, I just want you to notice um, the, sh the shading under the lips um, um, isn't, let's see. Well, you know, I can't really say because in my case, the value is similar to the lips, but I just don't, your shading under your lips, you know, let's not look at mine, let's look at your artwork, um, is too thin and too dark. Ah. If it was a little bit thicker and a little bit lighter, it would feel more like a shade, like shadow, and not yes. like, a, 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 you know, an object, something that, that's massive. Um, but this is really a tiny thing. I think the lips are beautiful. Um, yeah. Abby, uh, wow, you, 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 you did a lot. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I feel like the um, two things in a general shape of your lips, um, the Cupid's bow is, should be, you know what? We're, we're just doing general lips in general. So I think this is fantastic for this thing. Um, okay, so one thing, the bottom lip should be slightly straighter, just slightly, like more flattened, not so curvy. Um, who is, do we have anyone else that want to show? We don't. Okay, so, oh, wait, uh, Caroline. Um, Caroline, I love, I love the values on the top. I think your highlights on the bottom take up a little bit too much of the lip. So I want you to darken um, your lower lip, by the way, is a little bit thinner than the upper lip. And in general, the lower lip is usually bigger than the upper lip or the same size. So what I'd like for you to do is perhaps uh, uh, thicken it a little bit, the bottom lip, and you could use the shaded area to be just part of the lip and keep it straight on the bottom and then add another sh uh, shadow. Um, and keep the highlights to a minimum. The less highlights you have, the more pronounced and the more powerful they'll be. The more highlights you put, the less strong they will look. Okay, and we have Katie. Um, wow, look at those uh, fun fatal lips. Beautiful, beautiful. The, the darkness, the, the dark value. It's very interesting to see you know, each one of your works because you use different values. And the combination of values together always gives something else, always gives different results. So it's just beautiful to, to see the different outcomes. Um, my only comment, bring it a little bit closer to me. Um, I guess also the, your highlights. Remember that they're the top of the highlights, the top of the bottom lip is dark. This is something important. Because if you don't darken it, then it, it distorts the shape of the lower lip. It, the, the lower lip will, the, the lower, your lower lip would look a little bit more curved and more real if you darken the top of it. That's the, that's the bottom line. Okay, but um, when we have Ashley, um, uh, bring it closer. Beautiful, I love the highlights you also, you put some highlights on the top. I would be careful with the top lip to have it slightly less um, um, uh, varies in, in values and, uh, and keep, the, keep the interest to the lower lip. Because if you have too many interesting things in many areas, your eye doesn't know where to go to. But fantastic. Uh, Belinda, um, I would... I would be more careful with the outline. I see an outline on top and bottom lip, and I think it would be a great practice for you to do the same lips which you did with, with beautiful values and beautiful darkness, and they have their voluptuous. You know, you capture the, 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 the feel, the flesh. You capture that flesh. You don't need that outline. That outline is not necessary, and it's not realistic. If you do the same thing minus the outline, and truth is, if I were you, I would even take eraser and just erase the outline. You'll see that immediately it's going to look more real because you, you already have the shape. The shape naturally created that outline. It gives us the outline. We don't need that outline. All right, but fantastic. Oh, I'm very happy thank you. to see you. And Ingrid, one second, I just want to see that we're good with time, but I'll give some time. Okay, Ingrid, bring it a little bit closer to me. 
Beautiful, beautiful, fantastic. You have one extra highlight on the top lip that you don't need, uh, but it looks fantastic. Don't forget that you wanna soften the two corners of the lip. Soften them so it doesn't look like a cut in the skin. So it looks more like an opening. And the way I do it, I, the way I do it, I just kind of round it with some sh shadow. I just, in general, whenever I do skin fold, and did we do everyone? Okay, if, if I missed everyone, if I missed anyone that wanted to show, just unmute yourself and talk. And I will, uh, for the next, uh, until the end of the class, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about shading and skin. Um, what I notice is when I draw, when I, in, in general, whenever I draw a, a, a figurative, something that has to do with skin, with body, face, a figure, um, um, I always try to bring values um, to soften transition of values. With everything I do, there's gonna be a soft transition. So there's never gonna be a sharp line like this. There's never gonna be a dark like this without it being softened. So for example, when I do, when I do eyelids, let's say I would take this artwork and, and continue it and, and you know, bring it to a more realistic level. If I find, you know, there's a line here and you know how much I hate lines, but this is, you know, it's a line there and I can't ignore it, right? So there is a, a physical line here created by the crease. So I'm gonna do that line. I'm gonna divide my, the whole, um, the whole arc will be divided by three in my brain as I work on it because it just helps me do, you know, step by step, step by step. So I would first, you know, find, find that shape And then I would soften it. So I don't want my artwork, I don't want this line to say everything that I wanna say about that eyelid. I wanna, I want it to, because that, it, because that looks just like kind of pasted on. It doesn't look like part of the artwork. So how do I make it part of the artwork and how do I make it feel, even if I don't fill up the whole page, even if it's, you know, even if it's a, a kind of an unfinished drawing, if I want this to be a part of this artwork, for this to have kind of a harmonious feel, I would bring it together by bringing, by merging the values together. So one thing that I could do is if I take this, you know, kind of harsh dark line here, I would then, and I could use, I could use my, you know, my suede fabric, and I would just go over it just one time. And me going over and me going over it, what it did now, it, it softened its edges. It softened the, the, the edges of that particular line and turned it from a line to a shape. Now it's a shape and I can even go, I'm sorry about all these marks is where, where I was teaching the uh, 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 direction of the eyelashes. Um, and then I can go back and again find that line. So what I do is I lose and I find edges and I lose and I find shapes. Now I'm gonna lose it a little bit and I'm gonna find it again. And every time I find it, I may make a little bit of an adjustment to it and make it a little bit more perfect and look at and look more and look at the values a little bit more. Um, observe them a little bit more accurately. For example, notice that here, the, the transition, we have this, the, the tear duct, and then we have the, the eyelid, but here, here the transition between this value and this value doesn't have a harsh value in between it, the way it does here. You see that there's no line here. There, there's no feel of line here. I mean, there is, but it's very, very faint and soft. But then all of a sudden here, that line becomes more visible and becomes more darker and becomes a little bit even sharper. And the more I look at it and the more I observe it, it gives me more ability to, to portray it more accurately and make it more realistic if this is where I'm going for. But I go back and forth and I erase and I mark it again. 
yeah but the, the point is to 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 soften i think i think everything besides you know let's say the eyelashes i'm not going to soften them because that's I, I that's not an effect that i want but i would even soften this corner here remember i was saying before that there's no sharp corners then you know i should stay true to it by by portraying it more accurately so for example here i just soften this whole corner and then i'm going to go back in and find that corner that i lost i and and then it created immediately it created a, a softer transition from dark from very dark to light in a way that feels more organic that feels more real that feels more soft and that and that jumps of values really we're going back to this idea of using this so when i when i work i always ask myself how can i how can i show something without being extreme you know without taking you know black line on white background no i want a a a, a very dark gray on a dark background and that would give me less of a harsh contrast and it would make it perhaps more realistic or it will allow me to then just at one place use that harsh contrast for example here notice that there's everything around here the values are pretty close to each other and then in the center here it becomes dramatic we have you know very dark we have very light and that causes our um that attracts our attention the attention of the viewer he then looks at it and, and, and you know the eyes the eyes uh, uh just goes to the center to where you want it so you use essentially you use the contrast to 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 direct the attention of the viewer to whatever it is that you want whatever it is that is important to you in this artwork and uh this would be the end of our class for the day um it was great um it's my hands I hope you guys had a great time. We are meeting uh, Philip again in two weeks, right? Our next. Correct. Uh, yeah. So I sent the link um, in the chat, but I will also email everyone tomorrow with the link for the recording and also again the link to register. A lot of you have already registered for the third class. It's on September second, so we're thrilled. And uh, is there a recording for the first class? Because I missed that one. There was. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what I'll do is I'll send the links out for both. Uh, class awesome. one and class two tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, was, I enjoyed this very much. Thank great, you. Adaya. Thank you so much. My Thank pleasure. You. Thank you, everyone, so much. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. Yes. See you in two weeks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye, everyone. Bye.